Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey joined with my son Jordan Spivey and in today's video we will cover active versus passive transport so let's do this. Our learning target for today is I can describe the role of active and passive transport in maintaining cellular homeostasis. Active transport requires energy in the form of ATP to move particles from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. I like to think of it as rolling a ball up a hill. You would need energy to roll the ball up the hill from a low concentration to a high concentration. Types of active transport include sodium potassium pumps, exocytosis, and endocytosis. Sodium potassium pumps work by moving sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. It achieves this by using ATP to move the sodium and potassium from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration against their concentration gradient. Exocytosis is a type of active transport where materials and weights are packaged into transport proteins known as vesicles and released from the cell through the cytoplasm to the cell membrane. The vesicles actually fuse with the cell membrane and release their contents outside of the cell. Examples of exocytosis include releasing enzymes, hormones, and weights from the cell. The enzymes and hormones can be used by other cells and exocytosis requires ATP to move these molecules from low concentration to a higher concentration. Endocytosis is a type of active transport where the cell brings materials inside the cell by engulfing or folding around the material and bringing it in. Phagocytosis and penocytosis are types of endocytosis. Once again, ATP is needed to perform this process. Now let's move on to passive transport, which does not require energy. In passive transport, materials are moved from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration down its concentration gradient. This is like rolling a ball down a hill, which does not require any energy for that ball to roll down the hill. And there are three types of passive transport, which include diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. So let's first start off with diffusion. Diffusion is a type of passive transport that moves small molecules across the cell membrane from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Diffusion continues until the materials are in equilibrium on both sides of the cell. Some examples of diffusion include someone spraying perfume, lighting a candle, or putting a drop of food coloring in water. In each example, the materials move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration without the use of energy or ATP. Facilitated diffusion is a type of passive transport that moves larger and or polar molecules across the cell membrane with the help of transport proteins. The transport proteins are embedded throughout the cell membrane and have a binding site where a specific molecule or ion can be transported across. An example of facilitated diffusion is transporting glucose across the cell membrane. Since glucose is a polar molecule, it requires the use of transport proteins to get across the cell membrane. Osmosis is a type of passive transport that diffuses water across the cell membrane to balance out the concentration of another substance. For example, what if there was 5% salt concentration inside of a cell and 95% salt concentration outside of the cell? Water would lead from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell from a high concentration of water to a low concentration of water to balance out the concentrations of the salt on the outside of the cell and inside of the cell. It would not require energy to do this. This is an example of a hypertonic solution which would cause the cell to shrink and possibly die since most of the water has rushed outside of the cell. We will cover this topic in more detail in our next video. But for now, just know that osmosis is the diffusion of water from high concentrations to low concentrations to maintain homeostasis by balancing out the concentrations of other substances in and out of the cell. In conclusion, all forms of active and passive transport work to help the cell maintain homeostasis by making sure that there is a certain balance of materials in and out of the cell which helps keep the cell alive. If the imbalance is too large, the cell would not be able to maintain homeostasis and may die as a result. We thank you active and passive transport for helping to keep us alive. Now let's test your knowledge on the role of active and passive transport in maintaining cellular homeostasis. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description tab below the video. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, try again because it's not over until you win. Peace, and have a positive, productive day.